everyone, it's Max, and today I am here with my May wrap up. Now, in the month of May, my plan was to read sequels, to finish series, continue series, catch up on series. There were quite a few. I had 10 books on my original TBR, and out of those 10, I only gave three books over a four star. Wasn't great was not a good reading month rating wise. I was able to read all 10 books plus more. There are five I can't go over because they are part of a secret TBR that is coming out while I am in Egypt, which is coming up in just a couple weeks. I have pre-filmed everything. I've almost pre-edited and uploaded everything. I've got one more video, but I am just so excited. And check out my June and July TBR if you wanna know more about what I'm reading then. But without further ado, let's just get into it. So the first book I finished did start the month off with a bang, and that was One Salt Sea by Sean and McGuire. And I loved it. This was so, so good. This is the fifth book in the October Day series, which is about a half fae named October Day. And at the beginning of the first book, she is turned into a fish for 15 years. Then the story progresses with her waking up and her family, her husband and child, who are both human, kind of giving up on her and she starts to work as a knight and a PI for like the duke of the part of fairy that she comes from. I loved it. So, so good. I think the romance is going in the way that I want it to, so I'm very excited about that. But I just, I really like Toby. I say this is almost a female Dresden Files, where Harry Dresden is so misogynistic and sexist and just like in these, like, I just did not like that series. This does it for me. There's the supernatural mysteries. There's just intrigue. There's romance. It is so good. And I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I finished was The Frozen Prince by Maxime M. Martineau. This is the sequel to Kingdom of Exiles, which takes place in this world and our two main characters, well, a fantasy world, and our two main characters are a woman who can control beasts and an assassin who, whenever he takes on the duty to kill someone, if he isn't able to complete the job, it kills him. And this, I really enjoyed the first book. I thought it was so fun. I loved the world. I loved the idea of beasts. It reminded me a lot of like Pokemon, uh, but I think it worked really well as a standalone, honestly, because this did not work for me. I wanted something going into this series. I wanted more of a fun adventure tale where there's some intrigue, there's some romance. The insta-love was choking or suffocating. <laughs> the plot is just like kind of becoming like just big, you know, it's like, it can't just be like a fun, simple plot. It has to be like, turns out one of them is a prince and turns out this is gonna happen and everyone's bigger than themselves. And it just wasn't what I wanted. So I ended up giving this a 3.25 out of five stars. At this point, I did do a 24 hour readathon where I read all five, um, of the rest of the books in a secret TBR. I enjoyed all of them. That is besides the point. The next book that I finished was Take a Thief by Mercedes Lackey. I do own this, don't know where it is. <laughs> and this is about a thief named Skiff. Oh, I can't remember his name now. But he was a, he was raised by his uncle after his parents died, but his uncle really sucked and he's taken in by this group of thieves. But when someone kills them, he teams up with some people to try and find out what happened. He also teams up with a magical white horse where in this world in Valdemar, when a white horse like of this magic species chooses you, it means you are a herald. So he's taken to this herald school. He meets Albrecht, who's the main character of another book I'm gonna be talking about. And and I really, really enjoyed this. I love, I really enjoyed Skiff as a main character. I think he was just really charming, really sweet, very likable, and I enjoyed it. So I did give it a four out of five stars. The next book I read was probably, honestly, in my opinion, the most disappointing book, and that was Flamefall by Rosaria Munda. I wanted to love this. I loved Fireborn, and this takes place in a fantasy world based on Plato's the Republic. 
and there are dragon riders. Now, before the revolution, about 10 years ago, dragon riders were the nobles and they ruled the country, but they sucked. And so like commoners rose up and rebelled and killed a bunch of them. And we follow two main characters. One is the son of one of the nobles in hiding. And the other is a girl whose family was killed by his dad. I loved the first one. Both of them become dragon riders and they're competing to see who will become the king's first rider. He's not called a king, he's called like the commander or something. But I just really enjoyed the first one and this one did not work for me. I there We followed three points of view. I love Annie, I still do. She is the girl whose family was killed by Lee's dad. Lee was annoying me so, so much. So there is this uh, famine going on and there's an unjust system of rationing where, you know, there's different classes based on like a metal. So there, the iron are the lowest and the gold are the highest. Gold had like three rations, iron had one basically and then everything in between. And so there's a group of ironborn, like rebel, or not ironborn, but iron class rebelling. But Lee's reasoning for joining the rebellion really felt flawed to me. Now my whole reading blog is a little bit of a rant because I just was so angry. But Lee kind of felt like as if, you know, to compare it to like the BLM, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement. It kind of felt as if he was like, a white guy going in and vandalizing and trashing everything, saying that he's doing it for the BLM movement, but in actuality, it's just because he hates the president. Like that's kind of what it felt like in this, where Lee is doing some really stupid, stupid stuff and like being like, yes, I'm for you all, but it's really because he doesn't like the commander because he found out something about him. And I just could not get behind it. I'm like, boy, you were raised by nobles. And yes, there is something great to say about people who are from different walks of life teaming up with those of lesser means, I guess is not a great way to put it. But you know, I get it. But he just isn't in it to like actually help people. It really feels like he is in it to punish the commander. And it did not work with me. I hated Lee in this. I could not stand him. And then like she just kept doing our characters dirty. One character felt like he was having some great character development. I was into it. And then as soon as Annie's like, I don't like you that way. He's like, well, then you suck. And me, me, me. And I was like, you had this great character with such great character development and you just did him so dirty. And I just felt like she kept doing that. And the ending of this book, I don't know. I'm just so annoyed. I'm so annoyed and I'm just like done with it. I don't really wanna continue the series. The ending sucked and I'm just really nervous. And I gave this like a three out of five stars. It's probably being generous because I was really, not, I was hate reading it, honestly, for most of it because I like Annie so much. I actually, honestly, contemplated like skipping people's chapters, which I never do. I do on rereads, like I'll reread like favorite parts, but never the first time. And I really wanted to. I didn't, but I wanted to. The next book that I finished was The Archive of the Forgotten by A.J. Hackwith. This is the sequel to Library of the Unwritten, where our main character, Claire, is the librarian of like the library basically of hell. It is more of a purgatory where all books that have, that are like brought upon, brought out like, whose author has ideas about but has never actually written go to live. And now if an author has enough feelings for the book, it can become human and it escapes. Claire's job is to go and hunt them down. But when a book becomes a human and escapes, when she goes to, find it, and Angel smells the devil's Bible on her and decides to try and take her. I really enjoyed the first one. I really liked the idea. I liked our characters, but honestly, similar to how I felt about Kingdom of Exiles, I think it could have been a standalone. I don't really understand the point of this one at all. It felt almost like a completely different story. It didn't really relate to the first one much. And I mean, it was fine. It was pretty boring. It just didn't feel like much was accomplished. It's only 350 something pages. And I read it in one day, but it still just felt like nothing happened. I was like, okay, so how are we different now than at the end of the first book? Cause one major thing does happen. But other than that, everything else kind of felt just like 
okay. Like, what was the point of that? And yeah, so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars, maybe even less. The next book was my second Mercedes Lackey book of the month, and that was Exile's Valor. And this didn't love it again. I find Albrecht very boring. I do not like him as a main character. I've only read three books by Mercedes Lackey, two of which were following Albrecht. Didn't really love either of them, didn't really like either of them, and then one was Take a Thief, which I did really enjoy. So I am excited to see what I read next by her, which again, go check out my June and July TV, or yeah, go check out my June and July TBR if you'd like to see my plans. But this just was so boring. Nothing felt like, it felt like nothing happened. I didn't care about the characters. It just dragged on and I did not like it. I gave it a three out of five stars. Albrecht, so this story follows Albrecht who is a commander, a captain in a, for a country that's in a war. This country, it is illegal to have magic, but when they find out he does have magic, he escapes into Valdemar, which is a country that they're at war with, and he helps them fight the war. I gave it a three out of five stars. It was pretty average. One thing that I noticed is I read a lot of books with male main characters and they really didn't do it for me. <laughs> like Skiff did it for me and I think it's because he's like the lovable kid who's like got a heart of gold but he's a thief, you know, like that sort of thing. And then the two other books I really, really enjoyed had female leads. So I think that that's saying something. I really, I really do, honestly, because it just was not a great reading month. <laughs> The next book I finished was A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer, and this again was just disappointing. I really liked the first book. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling where our beast <laughs> and the captain of his guard have been cursed, and they live out the same season over and over and over again. And at the beginning of each season, the captain of the guard, Grey, has to go to Earth and bring a woman to their world to like have to hopefully fall in love with our beast. And then at the end of the season, either they're sent home or they die, something happens. Well, Harper is from Washington, D.C., and she sees Gray trying to kidnap a girl and she fights back and instead he takes her. She has MS or CP, she has a muscular issue. I don't remember what it is, but it is awesome. Like, I really like that representation, even though as the series goes on, it becomes less and less apparent, which I think is not the right way to go about this. Cause like one of the big draws of the first book was the disability rep. And now, and then by the third book, like you get like a couple mentions of her like limping after she's overexerted herself. And I'm just like, that's like, what about this awesome disability rep that should be prevalent, but it just isn't. I did like Harper's point of view, but she's so passive. Like she goes from one man to the next being like, help me, help me, help me. She can never do anything for herself. And it just, by the end, I was just like, girl, like have some agency, do something for yourself for once. It was literally her just going from one guy to the next being like, hi, help me. And I just, could not stand it. I didn't really like Gray's point of view, nor Leah Mara, who comes in in the second book. And I just didn't really like it. And again, I'm just bummed. So I give it a 3.25 out of five stars. The next book was the book that at this point I had the highest hopes for, and it let me down. And that was Venge War by Kevin J. Anderson, sequel to Spine of the Dragon. I read Spine of the Dragon in April, and that's why I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna really like this. Spine of the Dragon is so fresh in my mind. I really enjoyed it. But this one, similar to Archive of the Forgotten, they ended in the same place that they began in the first book. Nothing, like when you look at like where characters started and where they ended, it was like, okay, so nothing has happened. And I just could not get into it. I just couldn't, I didn't like it. Most of, it's, it's just so obvious who you're supposed to root for because there's like two rational characters and everyone else is ridiculous. Like everyone else is just way too belligerent or naive or like willing to ignore what's actually going on. And I'm like, okay, it's a little too obvious like who our good guy is. Like I like it more when there's morally gray characters, when there's villains that you can sympathize with or just bad, bad, bad guys who everyone is going against, AKA the refs. But they just, 
we follow too many characters. There's just, this is, wasn't even 500 pages. And I swear we had chapters from like 16 people's point of view. So you never got enough to really connect with characters. You couldn't really get into them and sympathize with them because you barely know them. Aiden, our main character, I could not tell you squat about the guy because they, we didn't get enough from him. And when they, Kevin J. Anderson, just obvious, there's such obvious people you're supposed to root for. We barely got any point, like chapters from them. I felt like hundreds of pages went between Aiden chapters while like people that I could not stand got like 50% of the screen time. And I'm just like, why? It annoyed me. And I'm so sick of men <laughs> being like, like one guy, like there's a traitor. And the traitor is now like coaching the king, not coaching, advising the king. And he's like, you shouldn't get married yet because there, there's turmoil and the king is young. And he's like, this is the, like, it's the only thing he's ever been able to control is his wedding day. So he's like, no, I want to do it now. And our traitor in his mind's like, I'll never forget this slight. And I'm like, oh, calm down for God's sake say men's pride and ego I can't do it I can't do it I need a himbo give me a himbo and that or someone who's just like I love women and I respect women I can't I just can't do it anymore I just can't do these stupid men who are, have just such huge egos and they're ridiculous about it I can't do it I just can't <laughs> so I don't know. I think on Goodreads I gave it a four, but I just can't. Like, no way. 3.25, 3.5. Mm, no. I'm, I'm like excited in the overall plot. So like, I'm gonna continue the series. But it's just, I think we're gonna get some characters who are actually smart <laughs> and like that we can and, like sympathize with and like, and they're gonna do some things that I want them to do. Oh. This series is about a God created refs, a dragon, and humans. The, he created the refs to kill the dragon, and the humans are the refs slaves. They are able to defeat the dragon, but then the refs kill each other off. And so now it's thousands of years in the future, and humans are the only creatures. But now the dragon is reawakening, and refs are back. I really like the first one. The second one left a lot to be desired. The next book that I finished was Trickster's Queen by Tamora Pierce. This is my Tamora Pierce book of the month. And again, another disappointment. I just, this duology by Tamora Pierce really didn't do it for me. And it follows Alana's daughter who wants to be a spy. And so she runs away and gets kidnapped by slavers. And then she's visited by a god who says that he wants her, like if she, follows his family and keeps them safe for a year, a summer, uh, he will convince her dad to let her become a the, um, spy. And turns out that the family that she's following and protecting is are the family of a girl who could become the rightful queen of this nation. It was just ridiculous. Allie, our main character, is I want to say between 16 and 18. And in some ways, she's just so so naive but in other ways I'm like there's no way you'd be that good and she calls these people like her lambs and her children I'm like you are 17 like they are much older than you like calm down she's like gather around little lambs and I'm just like please stop and I just the romance was so subpar I did not like the romance at all it just did not work for me and I gave it a three out of five stars I also gave Trickster's Choice a three out of five stars but Trickster's Queen I did enjoy more but didn't really like either of them. And then I spent a day reading arcs. Over the month I had gotten two sequels so I was like might as well read them. The first one was West End Earl by Bethany Bennett which uh, I cannot remember what the first book was called but this follows a girl who's masquerading as a boy and like her twin brother who died and she is the is hired by an earl and they are really good friends and then he finds out she's a girl and some plot ensues there is a unexpected pregnancy timeline that i hate or plot line that i hate not between them thankfully but i have such a hard time with unexpected pregnancy plot lines in um Regency romance because I'm just like it's unfortunate but the women's entire reputation and their livelihood depended on their virginity 
and I just cannot imagine women being this stupid. I understand commoners and at the time women weren't educated at all so if they just had no idea that like what sex was or what it could do i get it but this girl is a noble woman her brother i'm sure taught her about like how to conceive a child and she just like goes around doing it and she's like oh no i'm pregnant and i'm like shocker and i just can't get behind it i'm like it sucks it does suck that this is women were basically chattel and property but that's how it was so the fact that women just so easily gave up their only bargaining chip and the only thing that made them worth anything i just can't get behind it i'm like they're not this stupid i mean maybe maybe they were maybe there were a, i mean yes there were bastards back then but uh, i don't know i just don't know i just can't get behind it because i just think it's just so stupid i'm like you are so stupid like that is the only thing that makes you of any worth and you will never get a husband if they find out that you have like had a child and you're not a widow like and it's just back then like i'm nowadays I don't know if I ever want to be married and that's okay. But back then women couldn't own property, couldn't own anything. They went from their father or slash like, you know, brother to their husband, to their son. Like that's how it went. Women had no agency. So the fact that they gave up everything to have sex was just, I just can't get behind it. And I gave it. And then the conflict, like the misunderstanding that all romances have felt so contrived and just so like, I'm like, you're deliberately misunderstanding. You're deliberately misunderstanding them. She jumped to these huge conclusions. I just couldn't get behind it. Gave it a 3.25, 3.5 out of five stars. The next book I finished was Paolo Santiago and the Forest of Nightmares, which is the sequel to Paolo Santiago and the River of Tears, where she goes up against La Llorona. I really liked the first book. Again, could have been a standalone. I really liked the morals and the friendships and kind of just like, and there's great POC rep. I really liked the first one. The second one lost a lot of the charm because a lot, a big plot line was her fighting with her best friend. And I was like, the one of the best parts about the first book was these awesome friendships that they had. And I just didn't love it. The plot was okay. Um, they're, you know, gunning for another book and I'm just like, don't think they need it. I mean, maybe if this is a trilogy, I can understand where one thing needs to happen and it'll wrap up. That's it. That is it. Could have been a standalone. Honestly, people ask me, like, should I continue on the series? I'm going to say no, because it worked so well as a standalone. So I gave it a 3.75 out of five stars. The next book that I read was the only book that was not a sequel, and that was Return of the Sorceress by Silvia Garcia Moreno. And I read this just because it was 100 pages, and I was like, why not get another arc out of the way? This is about a sorceress who, in this world, I think they rule, and she is overthrown by, like, her romantic partner. And the whole 100 pages she's working towards taking her country back. I've run out of space. I'll be right back. Overall, I just thought there wasn't any world building. There wasn't much character growth or development and it was pretty bland. So I did give it a three out of five stars. After that, I finished the, I want to say best book I read this month and what a shocker it was. That was Bloody Rose by Nicholas Eames. This is the sequel to Kings of the Wild, which follows a mercenary group who are trying to save one of the guy's daughters, who is Bloody Rose. And this one follows her, and I enjoyed it so much. This follows Bloody Rose's, Rose's troop, especially Tam, who is their bard. She is our main character as they go and try to kill the dragon eater, and also try to figure out who is raising creatures and people from the dead. I loved it so much i enjoyed it just so so much i liked i loved tam i liked rose i liked all of our characters here they all are on the cover these are our main characters and i loved all of them so so good i just had such a blast i enjoyed it so much this was the perfect i wish i'd read it earlier honestly i thought that i wasn't going to enjoy this one as much so that's why i held it off till the end and i am so happy that I liked it. There is a third book and I'm wondering if it's going to follow Bloody Rose's daughter Ren because the first book followed her dad then her now maybe Ren. We'll see but I did really like it and I gave it a five out of five stars. Maybe a 4.75 out of five stars but 
close enough. Then I read Lumberjanes volume 15, which was okay. It follows, it's all about Joe's birthday. It was fine. Again, the series has like lost its heart a bit. So I gave it a four out of five stars. And then the last book that I read in the month of May was Across Green Grass Fields by Sean and McGuire. And it has been such a while since I've read something by Sean and McGuire that wasn't an October day book. And I enjoyed it. I love Sean and McGuire so much. I love, I have enjoyed every single book I've read by her as Mira Grant, as Sean and McGuire, as A. Deborah Baker. I have enjoyed every single book that I've read by her. I have not loved every single one of them, but I have enjoyed. Middle Game is one of my favorite books of all time. Into the Drowning Deep was phenomenal. Her October Day series blows me away. And the Every Heart of Doorway series, something about wayward children, House of Wayward Children or whatever. It's such an interesting idea. I always wish each book was longer though. But Across Green Grass Fields was the most recent addition to that series, and it is about a girl named Reagan who finds herself in a world full of ungulates. So, and I don't know, horses I guess aren't considered ungulates, but horses, deers, menatar, like unicorns, centaurs, like all that stuff. And it turns out anytime a human comes to this world, they are destined to change the world, basically meaning like overthrow the government. <laughs> and so that is her task. I enjoyed it. It's not my favorite in the series, but I flew through it, obviously, and just really liked it. So I did give it a four out of five stars. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you soon with another video.